After downloading Explain Everything for the first time and making an account, when you open up the app and you're on the home screen, you should be able to go up to the top right where there's three dots. And when you select those three dots, one of the options is Settings. Under Settings, there's a lot of different options that you can modify. But today, I think there's just going to be about three things that I want to adjust to make sure uh, that we have them right. And then you can adjust other ones later. First, under Editing, I want to make sure that the landscape project ratio is set to 16 by 9. 16 by 9 will fill the screen better when you upload videos, and 4 by 3 is a little bit more square. So it's up to you, but I think 16 by 9 looks a little bit better, and that's what most videos are made in. Next, under export, under video, the resolution, make sure that the resolution is something that you're happy with. I've had no problems exporting videos to YouTube in 1920 by 1080, even if they're like 30 minutes long. But if you wanted to change the resolution to something else, you could do that. And then lastly, under integrations, uh, you want to make sure for sure that your Google account is linked so that way you can add files from your Google Drive and then obviously upload your videos to YouTube uh, when you're done. If you want to connect anything else, uh, that's the location to do that as well, but the Google account is obviously the most important. Any other settings that you'd like to change, you can always go in there and, and take a look at those some other time. For now, when you go to start a new project, you'll hit that plus sign and there'll be three options that come up, blank canvas, template, and files. If you wanted to have the background of the video be the notes that you've created, for example, that you might have typically gone over in class, then you'll go to the files selection and then you can import things from photos or Dropbox or Google Drive. So as long as you made that connection, then you'll be able to do that. But I'm just going to go with the blank canvas, which was the option on the left. And once I open up the, the project here, the first thing that I'm going to do is in the top left, I'm going to change the name of this project from whiteboard to something else that's more applicable to the video that I'm making. So I'll just call it Explain Everything. After I have the title, I can do a quick save. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to set up the background. Since I'm just using a blank canvas, for me, I like to change the background to be black. So I go in the bottom left-hand corner, I select those little rectangles there, and I click the little box that has the colors on it, which takes me to this screen where I can modify the background pattern and the background color. You can see how you can swipe between a bunch of different colors. And it might be easier to go to the bottom right hand corner and instead of the extended color palette, click that bottom button, which is a more basic color palette where there's fewer options, but one of those options is black. And if that's something that you like as well, then you can change the, the background to be black. If you prefer the white or a different color, you can do that as well. You also see now that I'm modifying from the bottom left hand corner, there are some options for patterns in the backgrounds. I can put dots, I can make the background be a graph. I can change the pattern color to uh, make it more visible. I can make it uh, horizontal lines if I'm going to be doing a lot of writing. So some different options that might suit your needs. But when you're done with that, you'll back out, and then you're pretty much ready to go. You have the project saved. You have the background looking the way you wanted it. At this point, if you were inserting a file, then that file would be the background of your slides. and uh, is now we just need to make sure that you know how to use all the tools on the right hand side and then you would be able to go ahead and start recording. The first tool that I'd like to talk about is the one on the top where there's a plus and you can insert just about anything that you want from pictures to files that you have, clip art. You can insert videos that exist on your iPad, type in equations, just about anything two tools below that there's a little pen tool where you can use different colors to color in the background of your video and mark things up probably the thing that you use the most and if you switch back up to the little hand tool above that you can take the things that you've drawn and move them around the screen if that's necessary also you'll find if you click on the pen tool again that there's other options where you can modify the size of the markers so if you wanted it to be much larger to make a thicker line then you can do that um, there are a few other things if you go back 
down to where the colors are for example I have a black background so the black color doesn't help me out too much so if you double tap on that color then you can change it to white or a different color if you felt that that was necessary or if you didn't like the standard colors the tool below that is a highlighter tool so for those of you who will plan to have the backgrounds of these videos be files uh, that are notes for example then you'll probably work with the highlighter tool tool quite often where you know you could be highlighting things or marking things up that already exist in the background of the video. The next tool uh, which is equally important as some of the tools to mark up the screen are the eraser right because there's a lot of times where you might make a mistake or maybe during the video you'd like to remove something and not have it be there anymore then you can choose uh, the eraser. There's a lot of other tools here. I don't know that we'll talk about all of them, but if you go down two more, there's a shape tool where you can insert shapes and uh, things like squares and circles. And of course, you can modify the colors of those as well as need be and then resize them and move them around in the background of the video if needed. If you decided that you didn't want those shapes anymore, a few tools down, there's a tool that is just the shape of an X. And if you anything you highlight with that tool, it'll give you the option to just delete it. And you see all that little red X come up. There's also a text box tool if you click on the A where uh, if you'd like to, be, before you start recording the video, if you'd like to put a bunch of text on the screen so that way you don't have to type it out during the video to save you some time and not make the video super long, then you can add in some text in that manner. There's also, uh, between the A and the X, a little option to highlight things. And when you highlight them, it'll copy whatever you've highlighted. So I've highlighted the stars. It made a copy of those, and then I uh, drag them over to the right. The tool second from the bottom there is a little laser pointer where if you wanted to guide students uh, as to what you were pointing at, then that, that's helpful because they can't see your cursor, your, your cursor or your hand gesturing, right? So it's good to have the little laser pointer tool. And so, of course, there's, you know, I'm just taking a few minutes to, to dive into some of these tools, but there's a lot of other tools and there's, a, you know, some of these tools are very capable and you can do some very interesting things uh, with that. For example, one of the things I didn't talk about was if you double tap the place underneath the pen, uh, there's a, a ruler there if you need to make some very straight lines. Uh, that is not a straight line, but what I'm trying to show here is if you had a bunch of lines that you drew unintentionally or lines that you didn't want to be there anymore, then in the bottom right hand corner, there's an undo button. And so if you wanted to undo some of the previous moves that you've made, then you can go ahead and click that. And then of course, if you click the other arrow, then it'll bring those moves back. And so that covers most of the stuff that you might use in, in your average video. You know, you want to mark stuff up, you want to erase it, draw some things, and then move things around. If you get to a point where you want to save, you can go up to the top left corner, click Save and Close, and then it'll take you back to the home screen. And hopefully, uh, the video that you want is there. But if it's not, sometimes it won't be. Just go to the library, and it'll probably be there. And from there, you can go ahead and just open it back up and continue where you left off. When you're finally ready to start recording, I think the biggest tip that I have is that you go ahead and make sure that everything that you can put into the background of the video is there before you get started. Because anything that you have to add after you start recording is going to take up some time. So I've got a little title and a little picture that I've included here. And then maybe there's something else that I want to add. The ruler tool that I mentioned before, if you go to that pencil and then select that pencil again by clicking on it twice and then there's a ruler option I could use that ruler to underline my video and if there's something else I wanted to add with some clean lines here at the beginning so that way it's there right when I uh, start the recording then I can go ahead and do that and so here I'm adding a little uh, tic-tac-toe box just because I felt like I needed something to fill that space before I started going to get rid of that ruler I just go to the pencil tool click on the ruler again and it goes away once I'm ready to go ahead and start recording, I'm just going to press that record button there at the bottom. And after I press it, you can see the timer start to go up one second, two second, three seconds. And it's recording everything that I'm saying and everything that I'm going to draw onto the screen. So I'm starting to make some marks into the tic-tac-toe game. And hopefully it's recording all that stuff as I do it. 
If I get to a point where I feel like I've messed up and I need to restart, then I can just click the recording button again to stop it. And then you can see I can scroll through this and on the bottom you're seeing all of the audio and on the top you're seeing all the little marks that I was making in two separate tracks. And so if I want to restart this, I can go back to the very beginning and I want to overwrite everything that I just did, but I don't want to delete anything that I had at the beginning of the video, and it won't. So I'm going to go down to where it says Mix. And instead of Mix, I want to overwrite everything that I just did. Mix is putting it on top of what I just did. Overwrite is getting rid of what I just did. So I click Overwrite, and then I select Overwrite again to make sure that I, I'm telling, explain everything that I want to delete everything that I just did. The moment I do that, you see the timer in the bottom reset and now it's recording all over again. Everything that I drew before I started making the video is still there, but now I get a chance to redo that, try it again, and not make the mistake that I made before. And so this is one of the things that I just think really separates Explain Everything from other, you know, apps where you can record stuff, is just because I have complete control over the audio uh, and the video, the things that I'm drawing. So, and if I want to make other types of edits, like for example, maybe there was a place where I was doing fine up to this point, but then, man, I really messed up at this particular moment. Everything before this is fine. You can go to that particular moment, you can select, you can hit the record button again, and overwrite everything from that particular moment on. So you can see the timer didn't start from zero, it started from wherever I was at that particular point. I think it was about 16, 17 seconds or something like that. Everything before that was saved and it just started recording and overriding everything from that particular moment that I selected. So really powerful and a lot of control over the audio and the video. Another thing that I, I tend to do quite often is let's say for instance everything that I was drawing on the screen was fine but there's something that I just said that didn't sound very good or I coughed or something like that. If I want to I can select that little dotted line tool in the in the middle left of the screen where those options are and I can slide to select a certain region and as long as on the right hand side I've pressed that lock button in the top track where it's all the drawings in the bottom track which is the audio is unlocked when I press that little trash can button then it deletes that little segment of audio but it doesn't delete the X that I drew behind it right so I can delete sections of audio without deleting sections of drawing and I can delete sections of drawing without deleting sections of audio so again a lot of control over the things that you're doing uh, with the editing as you go along and what it really does is save you time because you don't have to redo the entire video every time you make a mistake you can kind of uh, stop and get rid of all your little mistakes and shorten the video one thing you might find happen is the the screen will fill up with everything and you don't have any more room so you can go to that bottom left and hit that plus icon and what the plus icon is going to do is it allows you to just open up a whole new slide and so this isn't a new project I'm inside the same thing you can think of it as like slide number two if you were making a PowerPoint and the, re the recording starts from zero and all the same rules apply I can start recording and getting all the audio and getting all the video and this is just going to be the second slide in my video and that transition will happen automatically by explain everything it'll go from slide one to slide two and all of your recordings on each slide can be separate from one another so you can see there in the bottom left I see my first slide and my second slide separate from one another and they'll have separate recordings uh, and that way I can organize what I'm trying to do in separate little pieces Once your video is in a state that you feel it's ready to share with your students, you know, you see all your slides in the bottom left hand corner with all their recordings and you're happy with those, then you need to go ahead and export it somewhere so that way they can view it. And for me, I think the easiest way for, for me to do that is in this top right hand corner of the, of the screen, there's a little share button. And if I press that share button, one of the options is export. After clicking export, you can see at the bottom it says two of two slides are selected. So both of the slides that I selected are going to be combined together and shown one after another in the video that I've made. If you wanted to deselect one of those slides, you could, but I'm just going to select video. And then on the next screen, you can see if I slide over, one of the options for exporting is to YouTube. This pops up. I can set the title. I can add to the description. 
and then all I have to do is press that publish button in the top right, right hand corner and it's going to take my video, put it together, upload it to YouTube and then give me the link even after it's done uploading. It's going to give me the link so that way I can take that link and share it with my students. When you go to the top left and click save and close, the video will always exist on explain everything. You can come back and make modifications or play around with that, add to it later. But then now you have that separate copy on YouTube so that way it's easily accessible for the students. I guess the last thing that I'll say is, you know, the first few videos that I made, it took me quite a while. Uh, and then over time, I think I've gotten a lot faster with this. You know, you get used to it. You, you get a little bit better at using the tools. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, any of the hiccups that you had at the start. And so I'd strongly encourage you to take a risk and uh, go ahead and try to make one of these. Uh, because the students that I've been sharing with this with, they've been really interested. They enjoy watching the videos. And I think it's done a lot for me in my classroom. So uh, hopefully this has uh, a chance to benefit you in that same kind of way. Lastly, I'd like to just make two comments. If you start to do this regularly for e-learning or even just as a daily thing in your classroom, then you're going to accumulate a lot of videos. And one thing that will be very convenient for you is if you go ahead and ask technology to approve your YouTube page so that way as a teacher every video that you make at midnight it will automatically become viewable for students. So if I go home in the evening and I make the video and then I publish the video and it gets uploaded, then at midnight it will automatically be viewable and I no longer have to ask for that link to be approved. Lastly, there's a particular way that I make videos and some people do a much better job than I do. They know a lot more about Explain Everything than I do. But I hope that as somebody who's done this a, a few times, if there's any questions that I can ever help you with, if you get stuck with something, have questions of me, I will do my best to try and help you out or at least I can find somebody else uh, that can help you uh, move along. So please, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me. But please also go ahead and take the risk of trying out Explain Everything and, and hopefully it can help you and your students in the same way that it's helped me out in my classroom. So good luck.